I th thanks for being here this morning on uh, such short notice. Um, my name is Greg Poltolsky, and I'm the Director of Communications for the Archdiocese. Um, we're glad to see everybody here and happy to have such a big turnout. Um, so welcome to the Catholic Center. Uh, this is off to my left here is the leadership team of the Archdiocese. And uh, to get things started, I'd like to uh, welcome Monsignor Stumpf. Monsignor William Stumpf has been serving as the Archdiocesan Administrator and overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the Archdiocese since Cardinal Tobin was installed in Newark, New Jersey. So uh, welcome, Monsignor Stumpf. Good morning, everyone, and as Greg said, thank you for coming on such short notice this morning. I'm, I'm sorry that the invitation that we sent out yesterday about this news conference was so cryptic, but I'm sure you didn't have any trouble reading between the lines, <laughs> especially if you follow Whispers in the Loja. So but we're here this morning to introduce the new Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Uh, but before we do so, let's just take a moment and begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, in the covenant of your Christ, you never cease to gather yourself from all nations, a people growing together in unity through the Spirit. Grant, we pray, that your Church, faithful to the mission entrusted to her, may continually go forward with the human family and always be the leaven and the soul of human society to renew it in Christ and transform it into the family of God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. When Pope Francis appointed Cardinal Tobin as the Archbishop of Newark last November, there was understandably among all of us here in the Archdiocese a great deal of sadness. And ever since then, we have been fervently praying that God would send us a wonderful new shepherd. And certainly, he has. So it is my pleasure to announce with great joy. That Pope Francis has appointed Bishop Charles Thompson, the Bishop of Evansville, as the next Archbishop of Indianapolis. Please give us a hand. During my seminary formation and education at St. Minor's School of Theology, I could never have imagined that I would serve as Archbishop of Indianapolis. I should point out that Archbishop Emeritus Daniel Beekline was my seminary rector. In fact, I was his deacon when he was installed here in Indianapolis. Following Joseph Cardinal Tobin is more than a daunting task. <laughs> They tell me that I probably will not be able to wear his mitres. 
Moving from Evansville to Indianapolis, I cannot help but think of the best known song paying tribute to the Hoosier State, especially after my years at Minard as well, back home again in Indiana. I cannot begin to fully express my deepest gratitude and affection for those with whom I have served in the Diocese of Evansville. These past six years, I have been very blessed, very blessed, to serve with such wonderful priests, deacons, religious, lay colleagues, and most especially a mentor and brother in Bishop Emeritus, Gerald Gelfin. All of you in Southwest Indiana have helped to form and educate me as a successor of the Apostles as shepherd of the local church. Thank you for your patience and understanding and breaking in our rookie bishop. The church in Southwest Indiana will always have a special place in my heart. I look forward to serving in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, comprising the central and southern portion of our great state. I have to admit, I wrote the southeast portion because I've been in the southwest for six years, so I fear everything east of that is southeast. <laughs> but I was corrected. <laughs> Special thanks to Monsignor Bill Stump for his great service as Dawson Administrator. Actually, Monsignor Stump and I go back several years, as I do with several priests here. I hope that doesn't come back to haunt me. <laughs> Soon, Monsignor Stump will be resuming his duties as Vicar General. I already know and admire so many of you. I pledge to dedicate myself to you without hesitation or reservation. Together, we will build on the incredible foundation that already exists, striving to discern the signs of the times and make every effort to participate in framing the essential questions of faith and life in order to promote a shared vision rooted in word, sacrament, and service that enables us to respond rather than react to opportunities and challenges. I'm especially happy to be remaining in the province of Indianapolis, where I will continue to serve with such wonderful brother Pete, priests, bishops, I told you I was nervous. Wonderful bishop. <laughs> as Bishop Kevin Rhodes of Fort Wayne South Bend, Bishop Tim Doherty of Lafayette in Indiana, and Bishop Don Hine of Gary, as well as our wonderful retired bishops who still come to all, all of our meetings. Bishop Emeritus Gettlefinger, Bishop Emeritus Bill Higgy, Bishop Emeritus Dale Melchior. I look forward to continuing to work with Executive Director Glenn Tebby in the Indiana Catholic Conference. We have a great group. Drawing on my Episcopal motto, Christ the Cornerstone, it is my first and foremost prayer to be remain Christ-centered in all aspects of our identity, mission, and witness, and proclaiming the joy of the gospel, to be Christ-centered rather than ego and ideology-driven. Drawing on the Indiana Bishop's 2015 pastoral letter, Poverty at the Crossroads, may we continue to see, judge, and act with the mind and heart of Jesus. Drawing on the inspiration of Pope Francis, May we strive ever more diligently to embrace the call to dialogue, encounter, mercy, accompaniment, and missionary discipleship. With Mary and the saints, especially Mother Saint Theodore Guerin and Servant of God Bishop Simone Boutet as our companions along the way. I still have so much to learn, but I look forward to embarking upon this adventure throughout the Archdiocese and Providence of Indianapolis. Now I try my Spanish. Extiendo un saludo especial para nuestros hermanos y hermanas latinos. Mientras que no tengo ningún problema con la comida latina, a excepción de saber cuándo parar de comer. Pido su paciencia y asistencia para ayudarme a mejorar mi español. Ustedes no solo son bienvenidos, sino que también necesarios para cumplir Nuestra misión parroquial de proclamar la alegría del Evangelio a través de la, de la exploración e intercesión de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe para crecer unidos en una iglesia santa, católica y apostólica por medio de un encuentro personal entre unos y otros en Jesucristo.
I ask you to please join me that we never cease praying for one another and commend ourselves to Christ the Cornerstone. St. Francis Xavier, Peter and Paul, pray for us. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Time, any questions you have for me or anyone up at the table, and I do mean anyone at the table. <laughs> yes, John. Um, I want to just see if you could, if you could share your experience of receiving the phone call from the Nuncio's office, which are being appointed here, and what your uh, reaction was to that. Um, I received the phone call uh, Saturday, June the 3rd. I just arrived home from the ordination of uh, two priests. I just ordained, uh, and my holiday that day was on missionary discipleship, talking to them about how the Lord calls, the Lord sends, and we have to be prepared to go where the Lord sends us, not to become complacent. Or comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, that's no lie, I got off the phone and thought, who was I preaching to this morning? <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting, when I got the call to be a bishop in, in Evansville, Archbishop Sambi, six years ago, called and in that Italian way at the end of the conversation he says, I tell the Holy Father you accept, yes? <laughs> Not really a question. <laughs> there was no question this time. <laughs> the Holy Father, I mean, Archbishop Pierre Sambi, no, I'm sorry, Pierre Christophe, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, uh, the current Apostolic Nuncio, was a wonderful, wonderful servant. And we're blessed to have him in, in the United States. Uh, share with me, he began by saying, this is a great day for you. <laughs> and he said, I've been, oh, the father appointed me as Archbishop of Indianapolis, and he asked me if I knew where that was. <laughs> and I said, yes. He goes, it's your neighbor. I said, yes, yes, I know. <laughs> and I think I kept saying, wow, okay, okay, wow, wow, okay. And he just started giggling. <laughs> uh, he was very patient with my nervousness. Uh, and then he gave me a date for the, for the announcement. Again, there was no question this time. It was just a date. So that's how this happened. <laughs> then he called me the next day and said, can you go to Rome before the, by the end of this month for the blessing of the Italian? So, um, so I'm going to Rome June 25th for that. So. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a question. What's my vision for the future? You know, I, that's always the question I get every time I go to become a pastor of a new parish or, or a diocese. I got that a lot in Edmonton as well when I arrived. Right, right. I always tell people, you know, if, if I would have called the Holy Father and said, I, I have a vision for Indianapolis, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, my first thing, ultimately our vision is always to, 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 to seek to glorify God and serve God and, and to care for souls, to, to, to be... God told the people proclaiming the good news. But as far as how that vision fleshes out, my first thing is always to get to know the diocese, to get to know our resources, our people, and our, the, the richness of, of our blessings and gifts, and then together we form that vision. It cannot be my vision. It has to be our vision in going forward. So that, that's the best answer I give to that right now. Yes, ma'am. Can you help the people of the archdiocese get to know you a little better? How would you describe yourself? Short. <laughs> I'm, from a, I'm from a very Catholic family. Uh, my mother's one of 16 children. My dad's one of 13. I've had nine, a couple of them are deceased, but I have 90 first cousins. Well over 200 second cousins. Um, that's pretty Catholic, I think. <laughs> Uh, my family's from the most Catholic county in the state of Kentucky, Marion County, part of the Kentucky Holy Land. Uh, there's three counties there. They call it the Kentucky Holy Land. There's three counties there. Marion's the most Catholic. Then uh, uh, Washington County, where Springfield is, and Nelson County, where Barstown is. Um, those three counties formed the, those three counties formed the Holy Land of Kentucky. I think at one point, one of our historians uh, researched. I think over 50% of all of our priests, religious, had roots in one of those three counties. 
So it's very Cali County. We moved to Louisville. I was born in Louisville. Uh, Louisville. <laughs> and then we moved back out to Marion County. And then we moved back when I was 12. I was walking home from school one day and somebody tried to save me. My mother had explained to me there was something other than Catholics. <laughs> and probably at that point relatives too. So <laughs> that's why I've been a priest for 30 years. Um, just celebrating my 30th anniversary, May the 30th. Um, I don't know what else you'd like to know. Mark Bishop Thompson. Yes, sir. Have you been able to speak to Cardinal Tobin since you've been, since this appointment? Do you have any advice for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, when the Nuncio called, he said, I'm going to call Monsignor Stump. He said, you can't tell anybody. I'm going to call Monsignor Stump, the DOS administrator. And then after, after that, then you talk to him. I said, well, how will I know that you talk to him? He said, I'll call you back. So, and I said, well, what about Cardinal Tobin? Because I'll call him too. So Cardinal Tobin called me maybe 10, 12 minutes later. <laughs> and, and it was reassuring. It was wonderful. Um, I'll get him. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was, he was very affirming and very, he's been, you know, I, I, I just had great admiration for Cardinal Tobin. I, I couldn't have greater admiration for him. I couldn't have greater admiration for Pope Francis. Um, so, it was, we've talked a couple of times, and uh, he just been told me to be myself and go from there. And he talked about how wonderful you are and how much he loves you. So that's what we talked about. Yes, John. You mentioned in your remarks, to a certain extent, your Episcopal motto, Christ the Cornerstone. How would you say, to expand on that a little bit, how would you say that, that when you're choosing that when you became a bishop, that that's kind of emblematic of your approach to faith, and since then, your approach to being a bishop and leading a local church? Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I, what I try to do, and I, and I certainly don't do it perfectly by far, but that whole notion of being founded, being rooted uh, in Christ, being Christ-centered about all that we do, um, in those three words, word, sacrament, and service. So for me, it's just being trying to keep before me that we have to be Christ-centered, not be ego-centered, self-centered, uh, as I mentioned, ideology-centered, uh, but not be driven, not be, not to be driven by my agenda, but be driven by God's will, the mission of Jesus Christ, uh, the grace of the Holy Spirit. So just that whole notion of being remaining Christ-centered, being rooted, and grounded in the, in the teachings and. Uh, Way of Christ. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, there's so much divisiveness in our country right now, and um, even in, in factions of the church. Uh, how do you feel we can address that and bring folks together? You asked about the divisions in the church, how to address that and bring folks together. Um, you know, obviously, we do everything one step at a time. For me, I, this is my personal opinion. You know, I, I think a lot of times, I, I believe ultimately the truth is more found in the middle than it is at either, either pole, extreme left or extreme right. I think more often than not, the truth, I may say, even authentic orthodoxy is found more in the center, in the middle, than it is on either side. And my, my great concern about the divisiveness, uh, which goes against very much goes against us as our, our teaching as Catholics, is we, when, we, when, we, when that divide continues to widen, we start believing we have no truth. One side of that believes we have the truth, and the other side, if I've got the truth, then you have nothing to tell me. You have nothing to teach me on that side of the side. And if you have nothing to teach me or tell me since I've got the truth, then I don't need to listen to you. And then I think what's happening more and more, we start demonizing other people. Our Catholic teaching is every person is created in the image of God. Every human being created in the image of God. And so how do we, you know, again, Pope Francis is, call to greater dialogue, to that culture of dialogue, that culture of encounter, the culture of uh, accompaniment, uh, that walking together, I think, how do we continue to bring people to the table to dialogue, to walk with each other, to have that, that core respect for the dignity of the person, even when we disagree. So that's where we begin, how we get all that done is, I'll look to Cardinal Tobin to show us that way. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, 
Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Talk around the time. Is she talking about retirement? <laughs> I have a classmate at Priestley, the classmate of the diocese, and sent me an email this morning and I found out he bought a house to retire. So I went by and said, Thank you for, uh, for your kind words. And I said, P.S., sell the house. <laughs> just teasing with him, just teasing with him. I think. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Any thoughts on how you go from a diocese the size of Evansville to an archdiocese that encompasses 39 counties? With trepidation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought about that after I got off the phone that, uh, between when the Archbishop uh, Pierre called me, the Epistar Nuncio, I, I to just finished an ordination. I had, 45 minutes before I got on the road for a confirmation in the northern part of the diocese. So that night when I came back home, I just got out to the directory at that very reason to look and say, what am I, what's happening here? So I went, going from 12 counties to uh, 39, going from half a million people to over 2 million people, from about 80,000 Catholics to, what is this, 225,000 Catholics. Um, I prayed a rosary at that point. <laughs> um, I, you know, it, it, for me, anywhere I go, and I've been in large parishes as well, um, before I became a bishop, and what sustains me, what sustains me obviously is prayer. I always take care of the prayer and remember, it's Christ's church, it's not mine. And I'm seeking to do whatever God's will is, whatever power Christ is leading me at any given moment. So to remain open to the Spirit in that sense, in prayer, through prayer, study, dialogue, but, but also having great people around me. I've always had great people around me. My, I've been so blessed have great people in my parishes. As I mentioned in my, in my statement, uh, the Diocese of Evansville, I just, or look, a diocese our size, it's just got incredible quality people and the things we can, we do down there, we've done down there in the last six years and even before me. Um, I'm just amazed at, at that. So it's just really relying upon people around me for great counsel, great advice, working together, collaborating. That's why there's so many people up at this table with me. And so. The best way I know is I don't do this by myself. We do this together, and ultimately it's, 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 it's Christ's church, it's not mine. So I think it's uh, was it now St. John Paul XXIII. They say when you go to bed at night, he'd say, God, it's your church, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Something to that effect. So. Yes, ma'am? Have you ever lived in Spanish? Have I been in a Spanish? I've spent, I've visited, I've visited, and I've never lived, I've visited, I've been, I've been in Mexico and Spain. Uh, I lived as a seminarian, I, I spent a month living down in the Brownsville Diocese with a family, uh, so I could learn more of the culture and the language, so I, I lived with them for a month. They have a, they have a room there, they named the Father Chuck room. <laughs> and I was a deacon at the time, but they named it Father Chuck, I don't know what they call it now, but, um, but just living, just, but, and, but I'd only visit those countries, never lived there very long. Would I love to? Yes, sir. Speaking of, uh, there's a lot of immigrants in our community and in, uh, who are afraid right now. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those folks about where you stand and where the church will be in uh, being there for them? Absolutely. The, again, it goes to our. Uh, our, our church's Catholic social teaching of the dignity of all persons, uh, option for the poor, the vulnerable. Um, our, another teaching solidarity, uh, another teaching on our family, community. Uh, there's so much our, our church embraces of all peoples, especially the migrants, the immigrants, the refugees. Uh, I think our, our, our church, especially our U.S. bishops right now, have been very, very clear. For, obviously, Cardinal Tobin has been very clear about that even here in, in Annapolis that we stand with them and that we're here to, to, to embrace them, to welcome them, uh, to work with them, to uh, walk with them as best we can. And so uh, I know I can't alleviate every fear, but certainly we're in this together. Yes, ma'am. Bienvenido. Gracias. Podría decirlo en español para nuestras personas? Uh, it better be in English. Lo siento, but I'm too nervous. You could say it in Spanish, so that 
that you don't oh. understand. Thank Sorry. You. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I, I wanted to say welcome and ask a two-part question ending with how can, how can we help uh, you carry forward this testimony. I was a lapsed Catholic for nearly 40 years in this particular parish, the Cathedral Parish, uh, brought me back and it was so profound that they said welcome home. So I'm very touched to hear you talking about listening voice of the voiceless people, including uh, a real safe space for discussions that have become so polarized in the testimony of the church and the parish as it touches uh, persons like, like mine, homeless, uh, and mental health issues. How, how can we help you reach out to find the testimony going forward? How can you help me? Um, <clears throat> primary, uh, Prayer, prayer, pray for me, please. Secondly, um, do just what you just did, just now did. Give your own witness to your faith journey and your care and your and your your own your own um, uh, embrace of your faith and what it means to you. So I, just that witness and, and the dialogue. Continue to have dialogue and you can have that. And, uh, but the prayer, the, the witness. You know, I, when I read Pope Francis, different things he writes, the three virtues I I, I seem to. Jump, jump out at me with them all the time. It's courage, humility, and generosity. And I think just in your words just now, I felt all three of those. My church and I love it. That's, that's, that's evident. Thank you for that, witness. Because you are, we are all together the church. Thank you. Did you have a second question? No, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really touched by the, the prophetic tone of your, of your model. It, it, Christ I, is attracting us and uniting us. Thank you. If I can do anything right, it's the grace of God. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Father. Uh, our Archdiocese is a strong tradition uh, of being a very youth-centered diocese, whether it be with our tradition of Catholic schools, our vibrant youth ministry programs, and uh, your words maybe to some of the young people in our diocese uh, about their importance and their, their role that you see in the church. Here in Central and Southern Indiana. Thank you, Father. Um, most of my priesthood, I, I was, I've had several uh, assignments over the years in my 30 years of priesthood. Most of that was also spent as high school chaplain. I was chaplain at three different Catholic high school schools over the years. Uh, one co-ed, two uh, all-girls schools. Um, I, I love the youth. I, that's, and I worked in all kinds of different youth programs in the Archdiocese of Lowell for years. One of my fondest things I do now is confirmations. Not, I mean, I love the confirmation itself, but I always go 30, 40 minutes beforehand to, to meet with the young people. And just, I love that dialogue. I love just kind of having that time. So the, the, I just, I love the energy. My, own, my experience over the years is just not only the energy, but there's a freshness of, of authenticity and just you see what you see is what you get from young people. And, and I just, I really, that's always inspir inspiring to me. Um, so I, they're, they're part of the church today. The key thing I would say to the young people is, you're the church today. You're not somewhere down the road. You're today. Uh, and the church needs you here and now to, be, to give your witness. And so that would be the key thing I would share with them. <laughs>